Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about dogs and the maulings. They seem to be increasing. I mean, this morning I went into the local shop and I saw headline news. A woman had been mauled by a dog. She was a, she was a dog walker. She's living in Surrey. Um, the armed police had to take away and detain six or seven dogs. I mean, what is going on? Just three weeks ago, a two-year-old child was mauled to death. An 11-year-old child walking up the high street. You know, a dog jumps out and bites her and, you know, she sustains all these injuries. Her bones are broken. You know, and the thing is, is that I know when I was growing up and the one thing I remember my foster parents telling me was when you see a dog, stand completely still, don't move a muscle. And that stuck with me. Um, and I think that lesson still needs to be instilled in people because I don't think people understand the sensitivity of dogs. Now, you know, a, a, a gentleman, he had taken a dog and they hadn't told him that the previous owner had been bitten by the dog. This dog then ate up the whole of his hand. He had to have plastic surgery. And he said it was unprovoked. Now, what you have to take into consideration when you're dealing with sensitivity of dogs is that they pick up on our emotions, whether we show it openly or not. They know our psychological cues. Now, can you imagine? And one of the triggers for dogs is anxiety. Now, can you imagine we are living in a kind of environment that is making us feel more and more anxious by the day? So what might seem unprovoked for an individual or somebody watching, for a dog, if he's picking up your cues, your anxiety cues, he's going to come and attack you. And they also have um, dogs that they, they don't like you to touch them certain places. They have their own personal boundaries. Maybe that's why children get mauled to death, because maybe they're touching a dog in a place where the dog doesn't feel comfortable. Now, a dog has been usually when people take dogs is to protect them, isn't it? So and some of them have them, you know, as pets or whatever reason they have a dog. But dogs tend to be very, very territorial, very protective they're very aggressive animals, especially the male dogs who haven't been neutered. If you're going to have a dog and you don't want it to attack anyone, you need to have it neutered because they um, apparently um, surveys shown that dogs that are not neutered are the ones that attack the most. And they attack men and children more than anyone else. So I, I just can you imagine how horrifying that death must be to have a dog just tearing at you? I just cannot imagine. And for armed police to have to come to the rescue, can you imagine how dangerous those dogs are? People have dogs in their home more and more. And I think, uh, sorry, I've got some hair in my mouth. Um, and I think, especially after COVID, when people weren't allowed to go and visit family. A lot of people took on dogs. I know they took on other pets, but a lot of them took on dogs. And a lot of people take dogs from homes and they do not know the history of the dog. They do not know or neither do they inquire whether the dog has a violent history. Something needs to be done about these dogs. Children being mauled, women being mauled. I mean, and it's such a horrific and slow death. And it's not even like anybody can help you. If dogs are, are mauling at you, what can anybody on the outside do? I don't know if, unless they've got a gun to shoot it, what can they do? 
Now, I don't know if the dogs have been detained for what purpose. I'm not quite sure why they're detaining the dogs. But I really strongly believe that with the anxiety in people these days, whether it's because um, infections are increasing, whether it's because they've got financial problems, whatever it is, dogs can pick it up. And like I said, you know, don't touch dogs that you don't know about. They might look cute. They might look nice. Don't, structure, um, don't try and touch a dog that you don't know. Don't allow children to touch dogs. A lot of you get a lot of people who are walking dogs and a child would go to reach it. And the mother is saying, oh, you know, don't touch it. And the owner is saying, oh, don't worry. He's, he's harmless. He wouldn't touch a fly. He's never killed anyone. He's never bitten anyone. But how do you know what's in that child or that adult that might trigger that dog who's never bitten anyone? To bore them to death. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway, let me just go to my notes to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I don't think I have. But today we heard armed officers detained seven dogs in police custody because a dog walker got mauled to death by one of them. Last month, December, an 11-year-old girl was mauled, suffering broken bones as a result. She's the one that was walking on the high street. I don't think they found the owner of the dog. He scarpered, left the dog, biting the girl and scarpered. Can you imagine? The girl had to be airlifted. Other people had to come and help. In November, dogs mauled a two-year-old to death. These are just some of the incidents. There's been a lot more. In the same month, five dogs mauled three people on an estate although they were not life-threatening, thank God. In June last year, a 10-year-old was mauled to death. And like I said, the list is endless. And they're becoming more and more frequent, if you notice. A woman whose husband was attacked, this was an 82-year-old woman, you know. Well, her husband was 82. A woman whose husband was attacked by their rescue dog has since called for a change in the law to force animal charities to disclose if a dog has a history of biting. I mean, that will have to be your responsibility. People are trying to get rid of dogs. They're not going to tell you about the bad things. It's like when you're buying a car, when somebody is trying to sell a car, they're not going to tell you that, you know, the battery runs low after a couple of weeks or something. They're not going to tell you that. They just want to get rid of the car. Same with a the dog. They just want to get rid of it. So you ha it's your responsibility to ask what type of dog you are buying and, what's it, and what its history is, if it's ever bitten anyone. And ask, for, you know, just give a whole blanket history. Have a list of questions that you need to ask before buying a dog. Mike Maidman's hand was bitten so badly he needed plastic surgery. His wife, Carol, later discovered the dog had been rehomed after biting his previous owner. The couple from Worthing in West Sussex said they would not have taken the dog on had they known his history. Mr Maidman, 82, said the dog, a terrier called Barney, attacked him without warning or provocation. And that's it. Without warning or provo provocation, that might seem might that might be what it seemed like to him. But was he anxious about something? Did that dog pick up his anxiety? What is causing such frequent maulings? Did you know that dogs, in the absence of any training, are sensitive to human mental states? They can detect chemical and physiological cues. Human emotions can become contagious. They actually take on your emotional cues, your anxiety, apparently, and react differently in response to a human informant with a true or false belief. So even if the anxiety isn't true or real, it's like what you tell yourself. If you tell yourself something, it can be true for you. This is a similar situation with these dogs. 
There is also dog sensitivity. A dog reacts negatively to the, to the anticipation of being touched or when being touched a bit like humans invading personal space. A dog may react defensively to only being touched in certain areas, paws, ears, mouth. And maybe, like I said, that's why children get mauled. How, do a, how does a child know whether a dog is sensitive to where he needs to be touched? Are dogs picking up our social anxiety because of what is happening in people's lives? Dogs tend to be defenders and many people have them to protect them and their territory. But dogs are becoming more and more unpredictable. And I believe this is just my personal opinion. It's not medica, it's not medical advice, it's not anything like that. It's just a thought process. But um, yeah, when I'm saying that dogs are becoming more and more unpredictable, is it because of the unpredictable un unpredictability in the emotions of the owners or people around them? Sometimes you have these dogs and all of a sudden they start barking and you're like, why the hell is he, start, why is he barking? I hear it a lot of times and the owner will say, he doesn't normally bark like that. Why is he barking? Why, you know, why can't I control him? It's, he's picked up something in that individual. Fortunately, the owner is there and can probably prevent that dog from breaking away from the leash to attack. But when these dogs are on their own or out, you know, I don't know how that dog got away from her that enabled it to maul her to death. She must have lost control or something. Something happened. Did a phone go off? Was she talking to somebody on the phone? Did he detect some kind of nervousness or something? We don't know. So what is prompting them to attack? According to the Guardian, men and anxious people are likely to be victims of dog attacks. A survey of 700 revealed that around 175 had been bitten at least once in their lifetime. Odds of men being bitten was 81% higher than for women. So what is the answer if you want to have a dog, but you don't want to worry about it attacking innocent bystanders? In other words, how can some of these attacks be prevented? Well, dogs have a prevalence or a prevalence of attacking children and such attack have the propensity to cause serious lifelong injuries and child fatalities. According to multiple studies, as well as anecdotal evidence, Male dogs tend to be more dangerous and cause a much higher percentage of dog bite incidents than female dogs. Male dogs exhibit more of an aggressive behaviour, particularly against children. Unneutered male dogs have a much higher probability of inflicting dog bites against individuals than male dogs. Who who, which have gone through the procedure, sorry. Um, so what it's saying, unneutered male dogs have a much higher probability of inflicting dog bites against individuals than male dogs which have gone through the procedure. The male hormone testosterone is responsible for a dog's aggressive behaviour, thus reducing the level of testosterone via castration or having a female dog greatly reduces the chances of dog attacks. So nobody's saying you can't have a dog, but you need to find ways to reduce the way it's, if it's going to attack someone. And you, you don't know individuals' human states. It's not like when you're passing somebody, you're talking to somebody, they're going to explain to you what they're going through at a particular time and whether or not that dog is going to react to what he picks up or what she picks up. If you have a male dog and want to reduce the chances of a dog bite or a dog attack incident, it is advised to neuter your animal. So I hope you found this useful. I'm not a dog expert. I don't have a dog. This is just me just looking up information, sharing it with you, hoping to shed some light or some, you know, give food for thought as to why dogs are mauling people like the way they are. And it's really scary. And yeah, so that's all for now. Bye-bye.